This week on Command N, smelling social media, Netflix comes to Canada, and Jeff reviews the Sony Reader. Welcome to episode 217 of Command N. This is our very special anniversary show, our fifth anniversary. Yeah, it seems like just yesterday when we started, but uh, Amber and I decided to come uh, to Charlottetown and meet this summer back to our birthplace and get to enjoy the beaches and hanging out with family. And uh, along the way, we thought this would be a great time to, to do our anniversary special. And of course, we have Chris here, and he's our honorary islander. It's true. But he doesn't have to drink Screech or anything like that. No, and That's in fact, the drinking isn't quite up to scratch when it comes to Chris. But he's in training. We'll, we'll, we'll work him up to it. Now, we haven't forgotten about the tech news of the week, so let's get right into it. And here are our headlines. Our headlines this week are sponsored by our good friends over at GoDaddy.com. We have a fantastic deal for you this week. You can save $5 off an order of $30 or more. All you have to do is enter the promo code COM530. That's COM530. You can find this promo code and more at our website at commandn.tv slash GoDaddy, along with a new video from GoDaddy. Well, we thought we'd start off the episode with some Canadian news, and it's great news. Netflix is finally moving to Canada. We're going to get streaming TV and movies from Netflix this fall. They're not going to be doing their DVD hard media distribution stuff in Canada, but you will be able to get sort of an all-you-can-eat package uh, for a monthly fee, just like you can in the States, a streaming video, and it'll work for PCs and Macs and associated devices, so really excited about seeing that. I would do my happy dance, but I don't want to embarrass anyone right now. <laughs> now, there is a guy who's been sweeping the internet for the past few weeks. He is well known as the old Spice Guy. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if the old Spice Guy has some competition. There are many parodies that have been released online over the past couple of weeks. One of my favorites is from the library at Brigham Young University in Utah. I mean, it's kind of an odd match, but they have produced this beautiful video with this guy who sounds exactly like the old Spice Guy, and they're talking about scholars, scholars. Very funny. Look at your shirt. Now back at mine. Look down, back up. Where are you? You're in the library with the man your grades could be like. Did you know that eight out of five dentists say that studying in the library is six bajillion times more effective than studying in your shower? <laughs> Close your eyes. If you're a fan of Google Images, you will love this next piece of news. They've redesigned the entire Google Image search results page. So instead of seeing just a few images, you'll actually see up to a thousand images on one page. So much better. It's beautiful, and you can actually roll over an image and it gets bigger, and there are other features as well. They've also announced that they will be attaching ads to specific images in the search results. So again, figuring out a way to make probably a ton of money. Yeah, and I use it all the time, so happy to see that upgrade. In other news, Apple has experienced some publicity problems relative to its iPhone 4 antenna reception issues. So let me tell you what we're going to do. Why don't you just give everybody a case? Okay, great. Let's give everybody a case. They We've held a, a press conference here. on Friday we want to give that where they offered a free bumper to anyone who has an iPhone or is buying an iPhone between now and and September 30th when they'll look at that again. They're doing a couple small software updates that will help the problem as well and the associated proximity sensor problem. And I expect this will be the last that we hear from uh, Apple on this subject. So hopefully that satisfies everyone. Apparently the number of drop calls are pretty low. So let's hope that this makes a problematic product a little bit better. So we are going to take care of everyone. We want every user to be happy. And if we can't make them happy, we'll give them a full refund. Does that make sense? Amazon has announced some surprising news. They've been selling Kindle books for a while, but they just released some information revealing that for the past three months, for the first time ever, Kindle books have outsold actual hardcover books. So 143 Kindle books to every 100 hardcover books. So wow, that's amazing great news, growth. I think, frankly. 
it is great news for a lot of people. I mean, I think people are really enjoying the e-reading experience overall. I know you're a fan, Chris is a fan, uh, as am I, and uh, I didn't think I was going to like it, but I'm sold. Yeah, and I'll talk a bit more about that in my review where I talk about the new Sony Reader. But first, some social networking news, or some news about social networks at least. The American Customer Satisfaction Index has done its first survey of social media sites, and they review 30 different online websites and rank them. And Facebook and MySpace came in the two lowest. They came, Facebook came in at 64 out of 100, which they say may look okay, but they would classify it as a pretty much a disaster of a site that uh, the people were complaining about the frequent changes, the privacy stuff, uh, navigation being hard to follow, and a lot of other things. So when you consider that Wikipedia got 77 out of 100, Google got 80 something, I believe, uh, you know, the, the Facebook ranking of 64, that, that's pretty much a failing grade is what they want to say. I guess it's not a big surprise because Facebook does so much. I mean, it's a place where people save their emails, they send emails, post their photos. So there's a lot of complexity to the site itself. Yeah, especially compared to something like Google, which is naturally a more simple site. And, uh, you know, social networking is complex. And to help you understand that complexity, we're always happy to give you our uh, power friending tips. If you're in love with the Old Spice guy, but you're wondering how they did it, there's a great article on ReadWriteWeb.com about how the agency behind those amazing Old Spice commercials created them and put them online and had such a wonderful reaction from millions of people. So you can dig through the article and find out things in terms of how long it took them to make the videos, which is approximately seven minutes each. And I think it'll really inspire anyone who's interested in social media to go out there, create videos, do something original on the web, and get the attention that you deserve for not a lot of money. I know a lot of you have written me and commented on my works, but I am just one ridiculously handsome man. I can't write to everyone. But please know that I consider you my dearest and closest internet friends. I'll never forget this time we spent together. I love you, always. Silverfish hand catch! I previously reviewed Sony's original reader, and I'm now happy to review the Sony PRS 600 Touch version. In terms of form factor, it's a lot like the original reader, about the same size. It's got the same kind of e-ink screen. It handles a lot of different formats, which I have to give Sony props for. They're handling more formats than a lot of the other readers out there. So you can get PDFs, MS Word, like EPUB, and a whole bunch of other things that I think really make a difference for this kind of uh, content. And they've, they've worked in some other interesting things. So the touch screen is obviously a major thing. Although the, the touch screen is very welcome, gets rid of a lot of the buttons that used to be around the old one. It lags a little bit, no big deal for reading a book, but when you use the iPad a lot, you're like, oh, it feels like I have to press it hard or something like that. But of very little consequence in the long run, it comes with, uh, I think it's 512 megabytes of onboard storage to store books, that's hundreds of books. It also has a couple expansion slots for an SD card and memory stick card. It can play music, MP3, AACs, and because of the touch screen, you can now do things like annotate books and, and do some handwriting notes, and that'll sync with your computer through the Sony Connect software, and some other things like that. If you double tap on a word, for instance, it'll bring up a dictionary telling you what the definition of that word is, but you can also search back and forth in the book to find other instances of the word. So if you're looking for a character's name, you can find out where they first showed up and maybe remind yourself who they are and things like that. There's a couple small issues, I think, with the screen relative to the original one. Because of the touch screen layer, you seem to get a little bit more glare, totally manageable, and it's not quite as sharp a picture. It's, it's the e-ink screen and it's perfectly readable, but if you put them side to side, I think, uh, I think you'd see that this one has a little less quality. However, the other features really make up for it. It's still got an awful, hugely long battery life. In the couple weeks, you can leave this thing going, and uh, so the battery's still great. And it's, it's still, I think, a standout in the category in terms of a you know, non-wireless version of this. They also have a wireless version with the uh, the Sony Reader, the level up beyond this, I think it's the 700, and they've got a simple pocket reader, which is, 
is the level down from this, which may be just what you're looking for as well, because eh, if you're just turning pages, the touchscreen doesn't matter so much. You can find these as cheap as $170 online, and that price is getting really competitive. It started up a lot higher than that, and, and as we've seen all around and as we've reported on, prices for e-readers are coming down. It's becoming a really competitive space. As Amber said, the, the Kindle's starting to sell a lot of books, and there's getting to be a lot more players in this space. So uh, if you're looking especially at just the pocket version of this, really cheap, compelling reader. This one adds a few more features with a bit of price, but still a really admirable piece of work, I think, by Sony. And uh, if we look at a couple of the controls here, you can see things like the set of buttons are page back, page forward, a home button to get to this home screen you're seeing now, a zoom button, which brings up your different levels of text zoom, and an options button that will bring up a contextual menu based on where you're at, if you're in a book or in a different menu or whatever. Along the top, you can see the different memory card slots, the on-off button, and there's actually a stylus with this, which does help it become more responsive. Along the bottom, a lot like the old uh, uh, PRS, except uh, you got your volume up down here, headphone jack, USB for charging, no longer comes with the power adapter, but you can use the same one for your PSP or your old uh, Sony reader. And it's got the same body as the old PRS 500 or 505, so any of the old book covers uh, for the old reader will fit on this as well because of the attachments. It just comes with a neoprene case, which is great for protecting it, not very practical for lugging around. So the PRS 600, touchscreen, great. It's novel at times. It does take away some of the functionality from the reader in the sense that it, it compromises the visual experience slightly. but. As I said, it's a, it's a recommendable reader, lots of different formats it can read, uh, really competitive price. So I would say either this or maybe even the model down are something that anyone should look at who's, who's looking into an e-reader. That's all for this week. I'm Jeff MacArthur. Enjoy. And now it's time for our web picks of the week. What's up, Jeff? Well, a viewer has submitted a great web pick. Pierre Combs submitted Stellarium.org, and it's basically a planetarium for your computer. They've got a program you can install on Windows, Mac, I believe there's Unix version there, and you insert your location, you can see the skies view and, and identify different stars, search for constellations, get other information about them. Very, very cool. Kind of Love brings it. me back to when we used to go out to the planetarium at school. Love it, very cool. My web pick this week is a site called Follow Up Then. Now, Chris cannot stop raving about this site. It's true. If you're one of those people who forgets to email people back or you forget to do something, this site is for you. It's completely free. You don't even have to sign up. Now, what you do when you're sending an email is you actually also send the email to the Follow Up Then service, so you BCC them, and they will notify you when you were meant to follow up based on the time intervals that you put into your email address in the BCC line, which is amazing. Such a good idea for people who are bombarded with emails. And so, so simple. So Love if it. you want to give us any more web picks or find out anything about us, you can email at info at commandn.tv or better yet, join us in the comments. We're almost there. And thank you so much for five wonderful years. Yeah, it's been a great time and there'll be lots more coming. That's it for this week and we'll see you soon. Look at my eyes.